Hey there, Nick Jutakis here. In this video, we're going to go over a couple of different command line tools to help us answer questions around uptime. For example, how long has a machine been up for? Or when was a machine last shut down or powered down? As well as when was a machine last rebooted? We're also going to go over how you can track the uptime per reboot or total downtime for a machine over its entire lifetime. That's going to be using a third party package called uptimed, which is the up records command. But for the other commands here, uh, they are available by default on most Linux distros. So uh, yeah, let's get started here and just go over the most basic one here, which is the uptime command, which will give you a rundown of how long a machine has been up for. So this is just a little virtual machine that I have up and running here. I did reboot it a couple times earlier today, but the total uptime for this machine is eight hours and 30 34 minutes here. And we can see uh, some other additional stats, like how many users are logged in. Right now, I'm SSH into the box here. That's me here. And we can also see a snapshot of the average load, CPU, memory, disk, et cetera, et cetera, all just averaged out. So basically, not too much load here on the server. But uh, if you just wanted to get something like, you know, when was this machine up uh, originally, you can do uptime since here. And that's uh, for the current reboot here. We can see that it's been up since. And then we can get the timestamp, right? We can see it's been up since uh, uh, April 22nd, 2023. And then there's the time there, uh, 12.56. Uh, PM in this case. Cool. So there's another flag that's pretty decent to run once in a while here, which is the pretty one, which will give us a relative time to right now for how long the machine has been up for. Now, right now, this box has only been up for uh, eight hours and 35 minutes now. But uh, yeah, you know, if, if this number is quite a bit bigger, you're going to see different types of outputs here. Like, for example, it may say like, you know, 274 days. So, you know, if you use uptime pretty there, you'll see like, 274 days and then the hours, minutes, etc. cetera. Uh, pretty nice to do once in a while here. You know, I find myself using this time, uh, this uptime command, if I just wanted to see like, yeah, how long has it been up for since? Perfect. Now there is another command too that you can run, which is who dash B uh, for boot. So if we go to the help menu here, we can see that the B is boot there. But uh, yeah, let me just rerun that one. Uh, if I can type, there we go. Who, and then let's use the long flag this time. Uh, yeah, we can just see that uh, the same exact time that we saw for uptime since here, or should be at the very least, or you know, within a minute here. But yeah, you can see that uh, this is basically giving us the time on when the system was booted up. Now, personally, if all I care about is that type of time, then I do happen to use uh, uptime here because I kind of feel like it's more intuitive just to be like, well, uptime since feels a little bit more natural to me than using something like who boot. But uh, yeah, there are other flags you can do with who as well. Like for example, the all flag will give you a little bit more information. For example, you know, we can see similar things Around, like users being logged in. You can also see uh, the system boot here, which is, you know, that time that we just saw with the boot one. Yeah, there's all sorts of different other things. Uh, for example, I don't have them all memorized because there's quite a few things when you do all, but you can see it's basically, it's the same as adding the B flag, the D flag, the login flag, and all these flags that we see here. And, you know, you can read this if you'd like or pause the video. I'm not going to run down every single one, but we can see also here, like, you know, uh, active processes spawned by init system. There's like dead process in, processes in here somewhere. I think that was D. Yeah. So, you know, kind of useful, I suppose, if you want more than just seeing the uptime there. So let's go over uh, another command here called last, which we can run here. And we can see now a decent audit trail of various stats around a system on when it's been reboot or shut down. Now this comes with a pretty big caveat here in that this log that we see here, it really begins starting on today. So What's interesting about this command, and by the way, you know, if you're running a Linux server or something for a long time, you know, the output that you see here may be a lot, and there are things we can run to uh, filter this down a little bit, and we're going to see that in a second here. But the really important takeaway is that this information is pulled from a log that will very likely get log rotated by default. So the idea here is, you know, this wtemp file here is in verilog somewhere, and uh, this begins today, meaning, you know, this log has been rotated today, so we're only really getting stats for today. This is uh, an unfortunate thing because it means like if, well, how do I know like how many times uh, a system is rebooted or shut down or something like that? Uh, it's not guaranteed that you're going to be able to get that information out from this command because, you know, you may be uh, only looking at five days worth of data or 28 wor you know days worth of data because maybe the log, it gets rotated uh, after 30 days or something like that. Uh, but we can also narrow this down, like I mentioned before, a little bit. Like, for example, if you just wanted to see shutdown related ones or reboot related ones, you can do uh, last system there. And I believe the short shorthand form of this one is just X instead of just using system here. But yeah, we can see here, you know, a couple of different shutdown ones. Pretty handy, I suppose, if you're in a pinch. And uh, you know, the third party tool that we're going to go over, it gives us the complete audit trail of the lifetime of the system, although we do need to install a third party tool. But before we get into that, I do want to just mention like, you know, when would you ever potentially want to use something like the last command here? And uh, this actually was the prompt for me to make this type of video here. And it was doing some client work where a client had a server that was on AWS. So they have like an EC2 instance, basically a cloud server somewhere. And it was in a shutdown state for quite some time. So 
AWS, when you spin up a machine, it will let you know exactly uh, at the AWS, like, you know, web UI level when the machine was created. So let's say the machine was created six years ago. Now, when you have a cloud hosted machine, and, you know, this is also uh, dedicated hardware as well, like, you know, you can, you can stop a server, but you don't necessarily need to delete it, right? It's effectively like turning off the power to the system. So what they had was the six-year-old server that's been shut off for some period of time. Uh, we don't know uh, exactly how long it was, but now we know thanks to using this command here, spoiler alert. But uh, what happened there was, yeah, we knew it was created six years ago. So what I ended up doing there was just starting the server. And uh, the first thing I did was like, you know, I just ran through the history commands to see if there's any, uh, you know, Linux command that you can run, like a shutdown command to see if the box was rebooted uh, programmatically, like from the command line. But it uh, turns out, you know, the machine was turned off through the Amazon Web UI. So basically, you know, they just went to uh, stop on the machine, you know, they selected it and stopped it. So there was no shell history. So then, yeah, I just ran this uh, last system shutdown command like this. And since the box was shut down for a number of years, uh, it was like, you know, basically shut down four years after it started. So it was shut off for two years. There was no way for the logs to get rotated because the machine wasn't on to do the rotation. So when I logged in, ran the commands here, I was able to see like, oh, okay, cool. Like the last state of the system here, you know, it was shut down uh, four years after it started, give or take. And that helped us gain the confidence to know that that date that we ended up getting back there for the shutdown one, it aligned exactly with the creation date of a different server that replaced what it was doing. So we had very high confidence that, uh, yeah, it was safe to delete that older server because the new one was doing uh, basically, you know, a better version of the old one, you know, more upgraded, et cetera, et cetera. You know, we got everything off the server that we needed to, and then we deleted it very happily. But now let's say that, uh, yeah, you know, maybe you have a dev box or your own server and you just want to be able to track lifetime stats around, you know, reboots and things like that. So there is this one command, uh, up records. And by the way, uh, the previous commands we went over, like uptime, who, and last, those are just going to be available by default, at least on Debian and Ubuntu and, you know, a couple other major distros. But this up records command, this is not going to be enabled by default. You would need to run something like a sudo app get uh, install, and then it's uh, up up D over here, or uptime D, sorry. Uh, that package is pretty standardly named across different distros. I did Google that one beforehand. So if you're using Arch or uh, even Red Hat or other distros, it is named that. But if it's not found in your package manager for whatever distro that you're using, then uh, feel free to Google like, you know, uptime D alternative or whatever uh, distro that you have. But we can see the output over here. So this output is nice because yeah, this is tracked lifetime of the system here. And by the way, we are gonna go over the output of a much bigger system. So. I should say there's also a takeaway here too, and that this up records command will only start tracking stats after you've installed the command. So, you know, as mentioned before, like if you had those lags that were rotated, you know, there's no way to get those previous stats. So this thing is only gonna start tracking your current reboot from when you install it. But we are gonna look at a bigger sample here from one of my friends. He actually told me about this command uh, or tool to, tool to install. But yeah, let's go over very basic details here. So it actually sorts it by default by longest uptime. So, you know, this little throwaway VM here, I've rebooted a couple of times just on purpose for the sake of the video. and because see the longest uptime here was about uh, 20 hours there. And then uh, the current one, this is with, with the arrow here. We, we can also see the boot up times here. This is the most recent one here that, uh, you know, basically the current boot, let's say. And then we can also get some interesting stats too, like uh, a cumulative like tally here on the bottom, like total update since the machine was, uh, you know, starting to be tracked by this up records command here. You know, I, I only installed that yesterday on this machine here. And we can also see the total downtime as well. And that's pretty neat too with the with the downtime. You can also see the uptime percentage, right? 99.7. So we can see there was total downtime of about four and a half minutes here, give or take, uh, since I started using this tool here. And that's because, you know, I shut down the the machine for a little bit, rebooted it a couple times, and like, you know, those minutes add up. And the reason why it can calculate this downtime is, you know, let's say, and I guess I can write this one out here just ad hoc, whatever, like I'm not gonna run a command here. But you know, let's say that you rebooted or you started up the machine at like midnight, right? Or 12 or whatever. And it's been running until 12.10. So, you know, we can absolutely conclude here that this machine so far, the uptime has been 10 minutes, right? So now let's say that, uh, you know, you shut down the box at this point in time and uh, some amount of minutes pass, you know, let's say it's like five minutes, give or take. Uh, when we boot up the box the second time, this command, the up records command can be like, oh, well, the current time right now is 1215. And the last time it was shut down was 1210. So it can deduce here that, you know, there's a five minute period of time here where the machine must have been down because, you know, something uh, didn't happen between when it was shut down and booted up, right? Uh, the machine was basically dead, right? It's like its brain was turned off. So then it could be like, oh, cool. Yeah, there's five minutes of downtime there. And then, you know, that 
gets accumulated here for the downtime and it just uh, keeps going and going and going. Yeah, the stats are a little bit more interesting when you're looking at uh, something that's been up for, uh, well, around for quite some time here. So I think, what did I name this one? I don't know what I named it. Yeah, Up Records Friend. So uh, there's a lot of, lot of output here. So by the way, this command, it will only show you the last uptime or the 10 last uptime reports by default. There are a couple of flags that you can run, by the way. I guess I'll go over them very briefly here. So if you run up to up records B, that is going to, and pay attention here to the boot uptime column, that is going to swap the orders a bit here so that uh, the newest ones here are on the bottom. We can see that this little pointer moved from the middle you know, it just happened to be in the middle because of uptime duration. But yeah, now it's sorted where uh, the newest uptimes or the newest boots are on the bottom. But you can also do uptime capital B here to do the uh, reverse of that one. So now the newest ones are on top. And uh, for me, I don't know, honestly, and by the way, yeah, I'm going to start using this tool. Like this is now going to be a default thing that I install on servers that I plan to keep around for a bit. You know, if I eventually ever switch to native Linux, uh, Hopefully uh, some audio things will be fixed uh, in my next hardware upgrade. But anyways, yeah, like when I run that, I'm for sure going to be installing this tool because it really is nice to have little stats like this. Because you got to think like that one wtemp log file, that, that's a really big log file. Lots of things get written to it. It gets rotated out. But something like this, you know, as we can see here, you know, this is my friend's setup here from, you know, he's had a box now for a couple of years set up here. We could see there's been... Uh, a pretty good amount of uptime and surprisingly a lot of downtime. But if you really look at some of the line, on, line items here, uh, it kind of makes sense. So he was uh, set up in a living scenario where his bedroom was also where his computer was. So at night, he would actually turn his, compl uh, his computer completely off. So, and he was running li native Linux there. So what would happen is, you know, we'd have a machine on for like 15 hours a day and then turn it off. So this is how you can accumulate a lot of downtime because, well, you know, if the machine is off for whatever 24 uh, minus 15 is, right, like nine hours, that's nine hours of downtime every day here. You can see it's actually quite consistent in how long it keeps things on. Uh, but you can see more recently here that there's been uptimes of like, you know, 60 days, 40 days, 30 days, whatever. Uh, now he has things split up to where he doesn't turn the machine off. But, you know, there was a lot of machines uh, like off time or downtime, and that's why that number is so high here. But yeah, you can see once you start uh, getting a little bit more data, it gets a little bit more interesting. It's kind of nice too. You can even keep track of, you know, what um, kernel version you have here. You can see it's been updated to, to 5.10 there. So yeah, there's some uh, flags here that you can run besides dash B uh, in case you want to have a little bit more uh, information showed at once. For example, yeah, what is it? The M flag over here, right? You can put in the count. So like if I just wanted to do M and then one, just to see one instead of uh, the default 10. But in my case, my friend here, he put in 500 and that's why we saw the last 500 there. So anyways, don't want to ramble on too long. Pretty interesting. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you are going to be using these this up records tool. I believe that is about it for this one here. Yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.